We are having one of my favorite songs for our opening hymn, Morning Has Broken, it's number three in the blue book. for today. Welcome everyone. It is so good to be with you all. So the announcements we have, we have happy birthday celebrations to Ian Officer, Jack LaPierre, Roy Nixon, and Anna Rousing. And happy anniversary to Kyle and Christine Karazic. Is, are there any other announcements? Is there coffee hour after today? Yes, there's coffee hour in the large hall. Yes? I haven't been here, I need some help, folks. <laughs> so coffee hour, please come on in and enjoy some, uh, some coffee and tea, some refreshments, and say hi to one another. Oh my goodness, it's so good to see you all. Are there any other announcements? Oh. The silent auction is coming up and bake sale, and that is when? November 19th. November 19th. Thank you, Margie. November 19th. So I know in times past, uh, well, pre COVID, um, I got a few Christmas presents. I purchased a few Christmas presents at the silent auction. Um, so come on out and support the community. Are there any other announcements? No? Okay, thank you very much. Please rise. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. 
For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The call is found, is printed in our bulletin. Let's read it together. Almighty God, you called your holy deacon Lawrence to minister the riches of Christ, and for the sake of Christ's name, gladly to pour forth his life. Grant to us who keep his feast such faithfulness in our service to one another and such joy in bearing witness to you that the world may be stirred to open its heart and to attend to your word of salvation through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the proclamation of the word. This is a reading from the prophet Joel. Rejoice, you people of Jerusalem. Rejoice in the Lord your God. For the rain he sends demonstrates his faithfulness. Once more, the autumn rains will come, as well as the rains of spring. The threshing floors will again be piled high with grain, and the presses will overflow with new wine and olive oil. The Lord says, I will give you back what you lost in the swarming locusts, the hopping locusts, the stripping locusts, and the cutting locusts. It was I who sent this great destroying army against you. Once again, you will have all the food you want, and you will praise the Lord your God, who does these miracles for you. Never again, people be disgraced. Then you will know that I am among my people Israel, that I am the Lord your God, and there is no other. Never again will my people be disgraced. Then after doing all those things, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams, and your young men will see visions. In those days, I will pour out my spirit even on servants, men and women alike, and I will cause wonders in the heavens and on the earth, blood and fire and columns of smoke, the sun will become dark, and the moon will turn blood red before that great and terrible day of the Lord rise. But everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved, for some on Mount Zion in Jerusalem will escape, just as the Lord has said. These will be among the survivors whom the Lord has called. The word of the Lord. We'll say the psalm responsibly by the half verse, and please join me in the prayer at the end. As for me, I am afflicted and in pain. I will praise the name of God in song. This will please the Lord more than an offering of oxen. The afflicted shall see and be glad. For the Lord listens to the needy. Let the heavens and the earth praise him. Blessed are you, God of our hope. You restore the fallen and rebuild the broken walls. Teach us the song of thanksgiving. For you are the strength of your people, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 
This is a reading from St. Paul's letter to the Colossians. I am glad when I suffer for you in my body, for I am participating in the sufferings of Christ that continue for his body, the church. God has given me the responsibility of serving his church by proclaiming his entire message to you. This message was kept secret for, center, for centuries and generations past, but now it has been revealed to God's people. For God wanted them to know that the riches and glory of Christ are for you, Gentiles, too. And this is the secret Christ lives in you. This gives you assurance of sharing his glory. So we tell others about Christ, warning everyone and teaching everyone with all the wisdom God has given us. We want to present them to God, perfect in their relationship to Christ. That's why I work and struggle so hard, depending on Christ's mighty power that works within me. Hear what the Spirit is saying. Our gradual hymn is, Will You Come and Follow Me, found on page 430. Please rise as we sing. with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according, according to St. Mark. 
Then, calling the crowd to join his disciples, he said, If any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way, take up your cross, and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake and for the sake of the good news, you will save it. And what do you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your own soul? Is anything worth more than your soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my message in these adulterous and sinful days, the Son of Man will be ashamed of that person when he returns in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable to you, O Lord, our Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. It's wonderful to see all your faces out there today. It's so great I got to speak to a few people and I'll come to coffee hour so I can speak to some more. You know, I'm especially excited to be here with you today because it's Dedication Sunday. We are celebrating St. Lawrence. Do you all know the story of St. Lawrence? It's inc incredible. When, now let me see if I have this right, the prefect of Rome demanded, he wanted all the church's assets, all the wealth of the church. And he said that to St. Lawrence. He said that, well, to Lawrence at the time. This is what I want. And St. Lawrence said, give me three days and I will give you what you want, what you ask for. And in those three days, St. Lawrence gathered the poor and the needy, everyone who needed help, and he spread out the wealth of the church so that the people were blessed and their needs were met. And when the three days were up and the prefect said, show me the wealth of the church, St. Lawrence gathered all the people together and said, here, here are the riches of the church. The prefect wasn't that happy about it, sentenced uh, Lawrence to death. A death that, upon the gridiron, which would be pretty brutal, and I don't know if it's true or not, but um, St. Lawrence was believed to have said, once he was cooked on one side, shall we say, I'm done on this side, turn me over. So it just, I, I love St. Lawrence because he, he just knew that the church isn't about money or about material things. We are the church, the people. And we are called to share what we have with the poor and the needy and, and those who need help. So it makes me so happy to be here today of all days in the year. We can think of it too as, as homecoming Sunday because we're gathered together after being away, well I've been away for a few months, but after being away like for the summer and things like that, we've come together again. And to, to dedicate, you know, we're dedicating today to St. Lawrence, but we're also rededicating ourselves to following God. I remember what it was like when I was a child and, and I would start the new school year. Remember, it was, you know, you might have a new outfit, but for me it was all about the school supplies. It's all about those, those scribblers that, you know, you'd open them up and there's nothing on them, just a blank page ready for whatever it was I was going to learn. I also remember each school year determining that I would do my very best. I was, I was rededicating myself to my education. Didn't always go smoothly. I didn't always do my best. 
but I remember making that commitment to try every, every year. And that's what it's like today. Today, it feels like we're starting fresh. We're beginning a new year together as the church, as a church family. And as we celebrate our return to church, could there be any better gospel reading than the words that we just heard? If any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way, take up your cross, and follow me. Now, every time I read those words of Jesus, I ask God to help me once again give up my own way, take up his cross, take up my cross, and follow him. I'm not, I'm not perfect, so I can't just say those words once in my lifetime. For me, it's a daily commitment. God, not my will, but your will be done in my life today. And you know, I'm glad that it can be a daily commitment because life gets complicated. As good as my intentions are to fulfill this commitment, sometimes I forget when I get sidetracked or, or life throws an obstacle in my way. Because as we all know, being a follower of Jesus is not all sunshines and rainbows. Life is not all sunshine and rainbows, is it? There are good times in life when everything seems to be going our way. The road is smooth, the weather is fine, and we are walking happily along the path that we believe that God has set for us. But none of us gets through life without some bumps along the way. And occasionally, clouds form. And maybe the rain starts to fall and our visibility kind of gets a bit blurry or, or clouded. And it's in those times that we find it the easiest to call out to God and renew our commitment to serving him. God, help me, please. But you know, it's also just as important to dedicate ourselves to be a follower of Jesus when everything is going well, when life is smooth, when we're happy, when we're content. Because when everything is going our way, when we are happy and healthy, or simply content, that's the perfect opportunity for us to build up our faith. We can fill up our cupboards in a way. We're going to the faith grocery store and picking up what we need to sustain us. So that when times get tough, when we find ourselves falling on our knees and saying, God, please help me. This unexpected thing has just happened and I don't know what to do. When things like that happen, we're not caught empty and unprepared. Rededicating ourselves to following Jesus and what we do to fulfill that commitment, that's how we fill up our cupboards. That's how we build our faith. That's how we get strong. It's through spending time in prayer and in reading the scriptures. It nourishes us. Now, you might be saying, AJ, you know, I don't have a lot of time for prayer, and I don't have a lot of time for reading the scriptures. Or I don't know where to start. Start in the Gospels. They're a great way to get to know Jesus better. Um, I find I, my, myself going back to the Gospels. Because, you know, just reading the words of Jesus, is there anything better? But there are days when I struggle to pray, or I struggle to spend time in the Word. But that's what it means to give up our own way, to take up our cross, and to follow Jesus. But God, I don't have time to, oh, wait, yeah, you know what? I do have time. I can turn off that TV, or I can put down that other book I'm reading, or, you know, I, I don't have to go run a bunch of errands right now. 
I can prioritize and put God first. And it's a struggle. It is. It is a struggle because we get caught up in life and life gets busy. But we need to try. I need to try. I need to try harder. We won't always get it right because we're not perfect. But the one who is perfect understands our imperfection. No matter what, God's never going to stop loving us. Isn't that amazing? It is absolutely astounding that the God who created everything created each one of us and says, hey, I made you special and I made you unique and I love you just the way you are. You know, we aren't the only ones who needs, need to rededicate ourselves to God. Jesus had to do that as well. Remember when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane? He said, Father, remove this cup from me. He was looking ahead. He knew what was going to happen. And he, you know, he was in anguish. Has anyone ever felt anguish? I've felt anguish. But you know what? He didn't live there. He, didn't, he wasn't consumed by those, those feelings. He said, not what I want, but what you want. And again, on the cross, Jesus said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But he knew that God had not forsaken him. Because a little later he said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. It's a choice, you see. A choice that we all have to make whether it's every day or every week or, you know, once in a blue moon because, you know, we, we, we do what we need to do. But it's, a, it's always a choice. We choose to follow Jesus or go our own way. We make the decision to either give up our own way and follow Jesus or deny Jesus and go our own way. The wondrous thing is that even when there are those times when we choose our own way, God still waits for us. So that when we return to him, when we say, God, I'm putting myself aside, I want to follow you. I want to take up your cross and go the way you, you know, live the way you want me to live. You know, he's always faithful to be right there, to be right there, to hold our hand as we walk with him. So my question to you, my friends, my question today is, which way will you choose? Amen. Please stand for the creed. Together, we believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with pure from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We will now have the prayers of the people. Following our prayers for the people, uh, we'll be using litany number four on page 113. 
Litany 4, page 113. In the Anglican Church, we pray for the province de l'Église Anglicane du Congo. In the Anglican Lutheran Cycle of Prayer, we pray for the Right Reverend John Stevens, Bishop, and the clergy and people of the Diocese of New Westminster. In the Lutheran Church, we pray for an end to gender-based violence and human trafficking. In our own diocese, we pray for Bishop Michael and Sophie. We also pray for St. Paul's Kingston, the Reverend Chris Mickelson, and the Reverend John Van Stone, Priest Associates. In our community, we pray for our congregations of St. John's and St. Lawrence, for our shared ministry. In our community, we pray for Wall Street United Church, Pastor Kim Heath. We also pray for our friends at St. Paul's, Reverend Hayes Hubbard, Interim Priest in Charge, and Canon Reverend Ted Guthrie, Good Shepherd Lutheran Church, and Pastor Moses Prashad, and Christ Church United in Lynn. Today in our own prayer cycle, we pray for Pauline and Paul McAdam, Bob McAdam, Tim McKay, Sharon Millette and Gary Spicer, and Andy Bev Markell. Pray for our clergy, Mike, and hopefully he gets over his illnesses soon, and George and our staff and wardens. We pray for peace in all countries, including our regular prayers for the people of Ukraine and other war-torn areas, for their continued healing. We pray for our troops serving in many parts of the world and members of our regiment, the Brockville Rifles, Rifles, particularly for those who are presently deployed. We pray for all people living in areas of conflict and for all refugees fleeing to safer countries. We pray for our planet and that we, that we may be all be faithful stewards of our earth. In peace, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, hear and have mercy. We pray for all who confess the name of Christ. Fill us with the power of your Holy Spirit. We pray for those whose lives are, are bound in, in mutual love, and for those who live in celibacy, be their joy and their strength. For all in danger, for those who are far from home, prisoners, exiles, victims of oppression, grant them salvation. For all those who are facing trials and difficulties, and today we are asked to pray for the wife of Bishop Peter Mason. Heavenly Father, give life and health, comfort and relieve our servant Carmen, and give you power of healing to those who minister to her needs, that she may be strengthened in her weakness and confidence in your loving care. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. For those who are sick and those who are dying, show them your kindness and mercy. We pray for one another. May we always be united in service and love. And today we pray for all those running for election and remind us how fortunate we are to live in a free society and vote without any pressure. We pray, with, pray to be forgiven of our sins and set free from all hardship, distress, want, war, and injustice. May we discover new and just ways of sharing the goods of the earth, struggling against exploitation, greed, our lack of concern. May we all live by the abundance of your mercies and find joy together. And as well, may we be thankful for AJ's visit and trust that God's hands will guide her safely home. May we be strengthened by your communion with all Christ's saints. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we have confessed that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways 
to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's share together in God's peace. The offertory hymn today is Come Ye Thankful People Come, number 262. No, it's not. It's number 381, Praise My Soul. Number two, found on page 196. But first we'll have the prayer over the gifts. Gracious Lord, your blessed martyr Lawrence cherished the riches of your church in the lives of the poor and the needy. Regard your own gifts in us that we may be worthy to share in the one oblation by which your son redeemed the world from its sorrow. 
We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you thanks and praise, Almighty God, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer. He is your living word through whom you have created all things. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh of the Virgin Mary and shared our human nature. He lived and died as one of us to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. In fulfillment of your will, he stretched out his hands in suffering to bring release to those who place their hope in you. So, and so he won for you a holy people. He chose to bear our griefs and sorrows and to give up his life on the cross that he might shatter the chains of evil and death and banish the darkness of sin and despair. By his resurrection, he brings us into the light of your presence. Now, with all creation, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Accept our praise through your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on the night he was handed over to suffering and death, took bread and gave you thanks, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is, which is broken for you. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This is my blood which is shed for you. When you do this, you do it in memory of me. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, we offer you this bread and this cup, giving thanks that you have made us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon the offering of your Holy Church. Gather into one all who share in these sacred mysteries, filling us with the Holy Spirit and confirming our faith in the truth that together we may praise you and give you glory through your servant, Jesus Christ. All glory and honor are yours, Father, Son, and Holy, with the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Church, now and forever. Amen. And now, let us pray as Jesus taught us.
we will be using the breaking of the bread number four, found on page 212. I am the bread which has come down from heaven, says the Lord. I am the vine, you are the branches. My friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God.
Please stand for the prayers after communion. Kindle in your church, O God, the spirit who blessed Lord served, that we may love what he loved and hasten to follow the example of his faithful daring through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the love of our Lord Jesus draw you to himself. May the power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. May the joy of the Lord Jesus fill your souls. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and be with you this day and always. Amen. Our closing hymn is, Who Are These Like Stars Appearing? on page 281. Savior, go in peace to uh, the, go in the peace of Christ and be a light in the world. Amen.